browser games have come a long way since the early days of Newgrounds and Adobe Flash Player. For many, modern HTML5 games have become a fantastic medium to get started in game development and have the added benefit of being easy to share and accessible to anyone with a web browser. The fact that they live in the same space as traditional web applications makes it easy for developers to integrate them with other platforms and monetize their games in a variety of ways. But while building games for the browser has a lot of advantages, it also means game developers and websites hosting gaming content need to protect their platforms from the same exploits that can affect traditional web applications. Unfortunately, not all do, and this leaves their user base vulnerable to malicious code injection, which can ultimately lead to stolen personal information, funds, and unauthorized actions taken through the user's own web browsers. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks, why you should know about them, and how you can protect your browser game or website against them. To demonstrate what these types of attacks look like, I've created a mock website that I'm just serving locally. And none of the games or content you'll see on this mock website are real games. They're just things I put together really quickly uh, to demonstrate what this looks like. And like many gaming websites, we have a search bar at the top. And similarly, you might have an in-game currency that you can send to other users, other players. Um, and you have a profile potentially where you can take various profile actions. You know, you can link it to social media, you could delete your account, you could change your password, you could log out, etc. So very often the root of this problem will stem from a input field such as a search form uh, or a query string parameter. So I'll show you what I mean by searching for action games. And from there, we get our search results. Now, this looks pretty normal. This is usually fine if we just do a normal text search like we did. Uh, and we just see what we typed in in this search results for action games. And we also see that reflected in the query string. But if we take a little closer look at the code, we'll see that we are grabbing the query string and then grabbing the search parameter from that query string. And then we're setting the inner HTML of an element near the top of the page to show that search results for our search query. For a normal text search, this is totally fine and functions as intended. But the problem arises if we actually write in HTML elements into the search query, either through that search bar or the query string. So for example, I could change the search term to add an H1 into it. So let's say, hello. And now, as you can see, we have this larger text. And if we inspect it, we have a new HTML element, an h1 element that wasn't there before. Originally, we just had an h2 element that we modify the text for. But now we have an h1 element nested inside of it. What we've done is inject a new HTML element into the page. And you can do this to inject any type of element, really. So we could try to do an input field. And as you can see, we've actually injected an input field, an additional input field, into the page. Now, this might not seem like a big deal. And of course, we could always um, do this sort of thing by inspecting the page and adding whatever we like. The problem is that this is from the query string. So you can imagine someone might share a link like this in an email or on a private website or on a forum. And then for the person clicking on that link, thinking they were going to their you know, their favorite gaming website or whatever, they would see a new form field on the page that wasn't put there by the original programmers or developers of the web page or web application, but by who's ever sharing that link. So whatever they want to be there. This already starts to show some of the problems. If we can inject elements like this, then we can make the page look completely different or add a field that takes some action that is not what the original developers of the page intended. 
As far as the gaming website is concerned, this is a valid URL. As far as the person clicking on it is concerned, it takes them to a website that they know and they trust and that they might even be logged into. And that is something that could leave their account very vulnerable. HTML injection is one thing, but it gets a lot worse when you start injecting JavaScript. Now, what happens if we inject JavaScript? How would we actually do that? One thing that we can do is add an image HTML tag to our search query. And in that image tag, we will give it a fake image and then give it an on error attribute. And this on error attribute will then execute any JavaScript code we put within there. So let's do our search term and I'll do it from the URL this time. So I'll say search equals action games, right? Just like before, this would just, um, you know, this would just show that search result. But now I'm gonna add to that search and inject an image tag that will allow me to actually inject JavaScript into the page. So if I do an image tag like this, I'm now gonna say the source equals not an image. And then I'm gonna say on error equals alert. You've been hacked. There we go. Okay, so I've now just typed in some JavaScript into the actual URL, but that's actually executed upon hitting the page. What else can we do? Well, the JavaScript code for the page is, of course, like any website, available to everyone. So anyone can just inspect the page, take a look at the JavaScript, and see any of the functionality that exists already for that page. And this could potentially give them prepackaged written functions that they could call just like we called our alert function to run from your account by you just clicking on their link. Now the functions I have here for this example are just dummy functions for this mock website, but you get the idea. And on a real website, these functions could have impactful effects on your profile or your personal information or anything else. So for example, we could change the alert to call the logout function to force someone who clicks on the link to log out inadvertently. We could try to pull information from a social media integration or to get it to integrate with a different social media account. We could try to take major account actions like changing their password or perhaps even deleting their account. But it doesn't just stop at single functions. You can actually take a lot more complex actions and inject a lot more JavaScript. So for example, we also have this send coins function, which might represent something you paid for with real money or a cryptocurrency, or it could also be connected to you know, a PayPal wallet or something like that. And there might not even be anything wrong with the send coins function itself or the form field that allows you to send those coins through. But the fact that you can get a hook into the page and inject JavaScript through the query string allows a bad actor to potentially access that field and get you to send the coins wherever they want you to. So let's demonstrate this. Uh, first, we'll just send coins as you would normally do so and as was intended by the developers of the site. So say I want to send 10 coins to my friend who's just another user who plays this game. So if I send that, now I've sent 10 coins to my friend, which is what I wanted. But if we can inject JavaScript, that means someone could potentially hijack this functionality for their own purposes. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to put this in brackets and I'm going to do document.get element by ID, and then I'm going to grab the element here, which is the send to user. Um, so send to user, and again, I could just inspect the 
page for that. Um, and w if I were to do that, I would see that in this little form field, I have um, send to user, this ID send to user. So I'd be able to find this ID and then know which input field to target with the injected JavaScript. So let's go back here, back here. So I've now grabbed the send to user uh, input field. And now I'm going to set the value of that. And I'll say, if, you know, if this were a hacker, they set it to their own username. So I'll say this is evil user 24. Now let's close that. So instead of using this, um, you know, just using a simple function, we've now grabbed the field right here and we've set its value to the person trying to take the coins, right? And then I could change the number of coins as well that we're gonna send. It's gonna copy this. But this time I'm going to change this to num coins. So I've now grabbed that second input field, this for the number of coins, and I'm gonna change that to say 100. Say maybe this would clean out this person's uh, account of all of their in-game currency or cryptocurrency or whatever it may be. Um, okay, so I've now set the number of coins, and now all that's left is just to call the function send coins, all right? Okay, so I've constructed this URL, assuming I didn't make any big errors. I'm gonna copy that. And say we're to share this uh, URL on some Discord server or forum or private website or whatever. I might advertise it as some interesting feature on the site someone's never seen before. They click on that link and all of a sudden, immediately, even though they clicked it on a link to a trusted domain, even though it's from their own browser and they did not choose to do this, they're now sending 100 coins to this evil user character. And, you know, especially if that was worth real money, if they paid real money for it in the first place, that is a big problem because now this person is actually stealing a value from this other user and they've done so relatively easily by injecting a little bit of malicious JavaScript code into the URL. And notice how that, what we put down there got reflected in here, right? Because that's just how the page works. But it's right here, this is the problem. This is where it all happened. This image element, that's what got injected into the page. And then some JavaScript on the on error of that image tag ran immediately after landing on the page when the browser was trying to render this image that didn't exist then it ran that malicious JavaScript, which actually filled out this form and submitted it. And that was just them hitting that web page, them just clicking on that link, and there you go. I'll link to the code for this mock website that you can run locally to play around with this. And with the code, I'll include some example query strings that you can test it out with. Hopefully at this point you can appreciate all the things that could go wrong were you to not protect against this type of attack on your website, and that's whether it's a gaming website or any other website or web application. So how do we prevent this type of attack from happening? Well, the answer is we need to sanitize anything that the user inputs into the site that could potentially make it onto the DOM. We wanna make sure we strip that of any potentially malicious code. Fortunately, this is very easy if we import a sanitizer library like DOM Purify. From there, it only takes one line of code to fix this issue in our case, and we can just call the sanitize method from DOM Purify and run our search query through that while also setting HTML to false, which will strip it of any HTML tags in that search query. And we can now test this out with the same URL to see what happens. So once we 
enter that URL, we can see that although we have the exact same text in the URL, the search results field no longer has that injected image tag, and therefore the JavaScript that was shuttled through that image tag is also not injected. Another thing you can do is use the browser's built-in HTML escape functionality, which will convert the HTML elements into text when they're rendered on the screen. So this is a nice option because it doesn't actually require any third-party libraries. And as you'll see, it will just display the raw text that we entered rather than rendering it as an HTML element. And you can see when we do this that we're not actually stripping anything out this time, but we're also not rendering any of the tags as HTML. So hopefully you learned something from this. This is one of the most common mistakes I see on any website. Um, I believe now that cross-site scripting attacks in general have taken over buffer overflow attacks as the number one type of exploit that gets carried out these days. Uh, and we only went over DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks, but there are many other types of cross-site scripting attacks that have a similar nature. The point is, if you're ever dealing with user input values, then always be cautious. If you're converting a user input value to something that gets shown on the screen or something that gets saved to a database, always make sure to sanitize it first, even if it's just a static site. If you have any kind of forms or login or search field or query string, strings, I encourage you to check these out and make sure that you can't inject HTML and you can't inject JavaScript into that. And this will really save you down the line because if you do have these vulnerabilities, it's really only a matter of time before someone's going to notice and take advantage of it and potentially do something malicious to your user base or your application itself. If you are a browser game developer, then just remember that it's not all about the gameplay programming and the functionality of the site. You also need to take web security into account. If you like this type of content, then definitely check out the other videos on this channel where we discuss gaming and homebrew and cybersecurity and various programming techniques.